for our topic, we had calculus and football. All right, so we're gonna do a quick history of football. So it's the original American football is also called gridiron football. And this is just to tell the difference between soccer football and our football. And then our football is a combination of rugby rules and soccer rules. And this was all done in the early 19th century. And then the founding father of football is Walter Camp. So he would, worked with Harvard and Yale to set up the college league with uh, the football. And then in 1920, the National Football Conference and the American Football Conference combined to join the NFL we know today. And then why we chose football. So there's many aspects of calculus in football, but we wanted to see how much we could find with just one single pass. So we'll be talking about the curve of the throw, the total distance the ball went, and then where the ball reached its maximum height. So we took a video of it, and this is where we found all of our data, and we put this into the Caps, or Pasco Capstone program, and we got a graph, and it shows it, and then here's the throw. It's a little hard to see. Pasco capstone graph that we got. After going frame, <clears throat> frame by frame with the throw, I got this nice curve, and I had to set up the distance at the bottom, which rounded out to about 37.11 meters. And with that, it found this curve that starts where Riley is and ends where I'm at. And with this throw, though it looks like a very, very simple throw and a very simple parabola, see that it ended up quadratic with the first uh, variable being nearly zero, but it can't be in order for this formula to, to fully function. All right, so some general information though. So the ball was thrown about 40 yards or 37.11 meters. And then we use the Pasco capstone system in order to track the movement of the ball and to get our formula from it. And then with our equation that our t is equal to our time, the f of t is our formula of the throw's curvature, f or the f derivative, and then we have a is the starting position, b is the ending, and then we use an integral. Alrighty. And then for the probably the most simple equation, we have just the area under the curve. And like he said, it's the distance was about 37.11 meters. And at my height, I'm about 5'10", and with the initial th height of the throw, starting at my shoulder, we just use that height for the initial height. And then that formula comes out with uh, negative almost zero t squared 0.73t plus my height, the 1.4. And then with that, we just use the simple uh, formula that comes with it with the integral where we have a starting at 37.11 and B starting at zero, and then throwing in the formula we had before for the curvature, we found that it's about 216.1 meters as the whole area under that curve. And then for total distance, this requires a, another formula that uses the same information before, but is much more complex, as it's using this an integral as well, but it's squaring the derivative plus one and the derivative is squared as well. And then using that, we found that derivative is negative 0 0.0404 t plus 0 0.738. And throwing in all of our information from before and the new derivative and squaring it, we find that the total distance that the ball throws is about 40.34 meters. And then as well with this derivative, we're able to take the derivative and make it equal to zero to find a possible inflection point for where the absolute maximum height that the ball can come out at. And by taking t, or by taking the derivative and e making it equal to zero, we're f able to find that t equals about 18.267. And by taking that and putting in the second derivative test, we're find we use the points where the range is from zero to our t, the 18.267, and the 18.267 to our final destination length of 37.11. And when we found that, we find that that range 
goes positive, whereas this one goes negative, finding that the 18.267 has to be a point of inflection, and with the endings have to be the lowest maximums or the lowest minimums, uh, the 18.267 has to be the maximum. Right, that's all we got for you. Oh.